In a former life, Maria Kolesnikova was a classical musician and conductor. In court today, the tune of resistance tapped out on her handcuffs. Her co-defendant addressed regime supporters. The Belarusian opposition leader, who's 39, was sentenced to 11 years in prison on sedition charges. The lawyer, Maxim Zanak, beside her, was given 10 years on similar charges. Reaction from their legal team after the sentencing. 10 years and 11 years in jail respectively. This verdict is unlawful and causeless. It's not based on evidence. Of course the defence will appeal within 10 days. The defendants, I think, will appeal as well. Maria Kolosnikova was one of three women who embodied opposition to the re-election of Alexander Lukashenko last year. After presidential elections considered rigged, the man dubbed Europe's last dictator saw tens of thousands take to the streets. Cue a brutal crackdown and a rolling programme of arrests. Kalashnikova was detained, brought to the border, but then ripped up her passport instead of facing exile. Hundreds have been arrested since mass demonstrations 12 months ago, including activists taken off diverted Ryanair flights, of course. So, with the Kalashnikova sentencing, the question, how much is too much for the people of Belarus? The sources of Lukashenko's power, his self-appointed security, his state machine, his patron, Putin. Because he has been in power for 27 years, he controls everything, he appoints ministers, directors and so on, the, the kind of top leadership of every department, every um, uh, sort of institution that exists in Belarus. And the third, I think, is Russia. Um, Putin might not be a big fan of Lukashenko, but Putin gives support to Lukashenko. For the opposition, the severity of today's sentencing smacks of a regime scrambling to smother dissent, smacks of fear. For the Lukashenko apparatus, though, it's a show of strength, an exercise in oiling the machine. Well, joining me now is Fornak, Fornak Vyachoka. He's the senior advisor to the exiled Belarus opposition leader, Svetlana Tikhanovskaya. Mr. Vyachoka, welcome, welcome to the programme. Um, what was your reaction to the court result today? It was shocking, it was frustrating, but it was also predictable because uh, Maria Kolesnikova became a personal enemy of Lukashenko. You could see she was uh, smiling, she was dancing, being in prison for almost a year. It didn't break her and Lukashenko is outraged because he was hoping that with the terror, with the repression, he can stop the people's movement. And what about these accusations that they were trying to conduct a coup and that they uh, pose a threat to national security? Of course, it's a fake, and everything here is a fake. Accusation charges are fake, witnesses are fake, evidence is fake, and of course, they are absolutely innocent, and they must be released uh, unconditionally, along with uh, 650 other political prisoners. Lukashenko is trying to take revenge on the civil society, on journalists, on activists, on teachers, on pensioners who are in jail right now and who uprised against him last year, and he thinks that with uh, imprisonment, he can stop the energy. But it's, it's more than, than uh, individual freedom. It's, it's the movement, it's the spirit. And Maria Kalistikova became the symbol of the women empowerment as well. But the movement is withering. I mean, people are scared to protest. They understand. They've seen the crackdown. They've seen what happens to opposition leaders. They've seen what happens to those on the streets. The reality is it's going to be very difficult to organise any opposition now. Half of my Facebook feed is in prison right now. I am opening the feed and checking the names and almost uh, 340 of my friends are either in jail or in exile right now. Families, parents who are going to work in the morning, they are picking, they are taking two pairs of socks, they are taking to the brush because you never know where you end up this day, or in jail or in detention center. And of course, people have to resist uh, in underground. So they invent some new forms of protests. There is a very popular cyber partisan movement when young people who are very uh, well connected and uh, good in technology, they are hacking the state websites, paralyzing the work of state institution. And it's also the way to, to protest and to show their disagreement with the policies of the uh, dictator. But as we've seen in many contexts, cyber protest 
makes people feel good, makes them feel connected to each other, but in reality doesn't, doesn't shift power from those in charge. So how are you actually going to organize now? Not yet, not yet. Uh, yes, Lukashenko is still in power. We didn't win yet, yet, but we definitely did not lose. There is some dynamic. We see something which is called in theory split of elites. There are many people who were uh, near Lukashenko because they had access to resources. But because of the Western sanctions, these resources are scarce right now. And these people are really, really unhappy. And Lukashenko surrounded himself only with a small group of loyalists, but thousands of other officials and businessmen, we call them wallets, they don't have such uh, sources of funding anymore. And they're looking for the way out. They're looking for alternative. And I think the next wave of protest can be sparked by internal coup, by, by internal protest within Lukashenko's regime. Okay, that, that sounds like conducting a coup. Uh, yes, it's possible. It's not excluded. The situation is very heavy, very tough. It's developing, it's changing. Lukashenko is losing resources. The only uh, country he can rely on is uh, Russia, because even China is getting out of Belarus. Their investments are not secure anymore there. And Lukashenko is going to Putin almost every two months to show to his own people, to loyalists, that yes, perhaps I'm uh, not so strong as before, but I still have uh, someone behind me and Putin is supporting me. Can I just ask you quickly, the EU, the UK, the US have all issued statements denouncing what happened today. What kind of support do you expect from them realistically? more pressure, more sanctions on prosecutors, on judges, on propagandists, but also sectoral sanctions on financial banking sector, potash, oil, all the sectors controlled by the regime. Only pressure will force the regime to end violence and release political prisoners, including Maria and Maxime.